Oh no, not another bloody bluebell video. This morning I've come to a place that is delightfully named Muddy Brow Plantation and I'm here to shoot some bluebells. Um, I suspect by now you lot are sick of bluebell videos but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Now I've never really taken a shot of bluebells before. Woodland isn't really my thing. I find it far too chaotic and I really struggle to find composition here. But today we're gonna to have a go anyway. Now before we get started, there's a little bit of housekeeping to do. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about is my website. So, you may remember that I recently finished my Lake District Location Guide, and I produced that guide in order to help me rank for the search term Lake District Landscape Photography. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to be able to say that when I checked my search ranking uh, yesterday, um, I appeared on the front page. I was actually at position four. And depending on where you check in the world, I'm actually coming top now for that ranking, which is absolutely amazing, taken me completely by surprise. And I really must thank everybody that's helped me to get there. And now, of course, the most important thing for me is figuring out how I'm gonna stay there. Now my website ranking isn't the only good news I've got today. The other bit of good news that I've got is that this is back. This is my Canon 24 70 millimeter standard zoom lens. And I broke this um, back in November 2018. It is now the end of April 2019. So I've been out without this lens now for six months. And it was actually away being repaired for five months. And all that I did was that while I was filming on another channel that I work on, um, the tripod went over because I didn't lock the leg in properly. And what happened was that the impact must have done something to the focusing system because it, I turned it into a macro lens. I could focus very, very close to the front element, but I couldn't focus on infinity. So it's been away, and as I say, it's taken them five months to fix it, but it's back now. And I don't know if I'm gonna use this lens today, um, but if I do need it, it does have a kind of macro function on it. So if I want to get really close to some of these bluebells, this might come in handy. Now before we start, I do just want to say this. Muddy Brow Plantation is private. There is no public right of access. So I'm not gonna go in there today. I'm gonna to stick to the edge and just follow this road that runs along the side of it. I think as photographers, it's really important that we obey these rules and that we don't stumble into places where we're not supposed to go. So today, I'm gonna to stick to the outside. I've got three shots in mind for today. The first one is of a carpet of blue pearls. And so I'm looking for three things. First thing I'm looking for is a nice patch of bluebells, obviously. The second is something to act as a focal point, maybe a tree stump or something like that. And the third is a viewpoint that isn't obstructed by stray twigs or foliage or something in the foreground that could be distracting. So I think I found what I was looking for. We've got this beautiful carpet of bluebells here. We've got a couple of three trees, which I might be able to position nicely in the frame, but most important of all, we've got a clear field of view. I've got the Big Ben Row extended to its fullest height without the center column up. And I've composed an image where I have a tree in the foreground on the right-hand third, and another tree in the background on the left hand third and I'm not sure which aperture to use in this situation so I'm going to try something that I always do in woodland really and that's I'm going to start at f4 and I'm then going to take shots at f5.6, f8, f11 and then finally f16 and then when I get back home 
I'm going to choose the shot that has the right depth of field for the subject. That's the first shot in the bag. And of the three that I'm going for today, arguably the simplest. The next shot I want to go for is of an individual bluebell. So I now need to go and find one that I can isolate um, and make stand out on its own. It doesn't get lost in a cloud of bluebells behind it. I'm looking for two things. First thing I'm looking for is a bluebell with a nice shape to it, an attractive subject. The second thing I'm looking for is a clean background so that the subject stands out. And I think this one has potential. I think I found a subject that I like. I found a bluebell that's got a nice curved shape and behind it is a dry stone wall, a mossy dry stone wall. And so that's quite a clean background. So I'm gonna take the shot now and see what it looks like. Unfortunately, I don't think that shot works. The bluebell is too close to the wall, and that means that I cannot throw the wall out of focus enough. You can still see some of the shapes and patterns. Unfortunately, that lens that I'm using only goes down to f4. So what I need to do is I need to find a subject that is further away from its background so that I can get it to stand out more. And I think this is a good example of why we shoot at shallow depth of field when we're trying to pick out an individual subject. I've had to come almost to the end of the wall that I've been working to find another subject, but I think I've found one. It's another bluebell with a lovely shape to it, but this time behind it is just a patch of grass, and that's a lot less distracting. Now, in order to get that shot, what I've had to do is I've had to put my camera on my vlogging tripod, because that'll get much lower than the big Benro with the long central column in. Um, the TMA 48 CXL comes with two center columns, one which is very short and that allows you to get the tripod very low. Unfortunately, I've left that at home. So yeah, that's what I've done. Got that set up nice and low. Now take that shot and see what that looks like. It's not just the bluebells that are looking fantastic at the moment. We've also got patches of wild garlic. And I wish you could be here with me now to smell it because it's such an evocative smell. Anyway, my final shot, I'm gonna isolate a single head of the wild garlic. For this final shot, I've got the camera pointing almost straight down and I've picked out a single head which I've placed right in the center of the frame. And that's surrounded by the dark foliage, which I'll probably darken even further in Lightroom to make those flowers really stand out. Now, depending on how you look at things, I'm either slightly ahead or slightly behind you at the moment. I have about four or five videos lined up to go. Uh, and this week, the week just gone, which is the week after Easter, I released uh, a video about Wass Water, a shoot that I did uh, shooting Britain's favorite view. And it was one of my favorite videos that I've ever made and it had some wonderful shots, probably my favorite shot from 2019 so far. But unfortunately, for some reason, views on that video were very, very low. It absolutely tanked. Now, if you like my videos, I suggest you go and watch that one because it is, in my opinion, very, very good. I think it's really worth checking out if you haven't seen it.
Anyway, that's enough from me for today, and I think enough bluebells for another year. If you haven't seen that Wasswater video, I do recommend that you go and check it out. It is one of my better videos, and I think there's a really, really good shot right at the very end. <laughs>